Good morning. It's Friday, February 11th, 2022. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for your journey today. Our devotion today is entitled, Temporary Residence, and our scriptures, 1 Peter, chapter 1. And remember that the Heavenly Father to whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear of him during your time here as temporary residents. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But now, in these days, he has been revealed for your sake. Through Christ, you have come to trust in God, and you have placed your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. You were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. I can honestly say I do not recall a time when I met a refugee, that is, other than the thousands of people who populated the churches I served over the years, or the millions of people who I passed on the street or interstate, or every pastor I ever met at a conference, or child my kids went to school with, or salesperson who checked out my purchase, or, well, you get the idea. We're all refugees just passing through this time on earth, about three score and ten trips around the sun. So, to what significance was the big fisherman Peter pointing when he called us temporary residents? Is it an important distinction? Well, the most poignant reference is the distinction between the words inherited and empty. Normally, we consider an inheritance to be a plus. Of course, someone we love or who loved us has to die for us to receive it, but the quote-unquote gain is on the credit side of the balance sheet. But Peter calls our old inherited life empty, and he calls the new life as temporary residence, nomads, precious, a gift of glory. This seems to be an inversion of evaluation. I live in a house with central heat and air on a nice quiet street. There are two cars in my garage. There's food on my table and in the fridge as well as the pantry. I've got neighbors that are kind of nice. By the world's standards, compared to most people in other lands, I'm rich. And yet, with all I have of this world's stuff surrounding me, it's all temporary. And that's because it's stuff, unseeing, unfeeling, breakable, temporary, and costly. If you don't believe that stuff is costly, you need to journal how many hours you spend fixing some of it or waiting on someone else to arrive to fix it if you can find someone who can really fix anything. The cost of having far exceeds the energy you used in getting. By comparison, consider the value of the precious blood of Christ's gift of salvation and the assurance of heaven. Everything you own or experience in this life fades when you lift the veil on Golgotha's hill and roll away the stone from Arimathea's tomb. It was a gift of love, that blood dripping down the rough-hewn beams of that execution Friday. You couldn't buy that with Elon Musk's fortune. For you today, it's important to remember that stuff or fortunes or lack of stuff and misery are all temporary. The only things certain in this life are death and the love of God. And that makes this life temporary and it makes you transitory. Change, eternal change, is coming. Paying attention to Peter's admonition here is all important if you're to prepare for death and the love of God. Peter said that because of the loving gift of Jesus Christ, each of us must love one another deeply with all our hearts. God doesn't see that as temporary. It's all that will last through eternity. 
You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.